Okay, uh, welcome back to a new origin video. Uh, in the previous, uh, in the comment section of the previous video, I was asked if I can show something regarding to fit functions, huh? how to fit a function to data points. And this was already um, yeah, the plan for, for my coming video. So I would like to do, uh, I would like to cover this now uh, in this tutorial. And uh, in order to do that, uh, actually it's, it's not as difficult as one might think. Uh, in order to do that, of course, we need first data. Yeah, so I opened now a new origin window and in the previous video, I actually uh, imported the data from a file, yeah, which you can always do, of course. But now I would also like to show you a trick how you can create your own data, yeah, which is actually, uh, yeah, which are actually f uh, values from a function yeah, that we define. So in order to do that, of course, we first need X values. Yeah? So um, we can now uh, right here in the X column, for example, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. But there's also a way how to, yeah, how to do this a little bit more automatically uh, by um, defining our initial value here in cell A1. And then in cell A2, which is here, we can write now equal A1 yeah, plus one. And then when we hit return or enter, you can see now a two appears. Yeah? So we calculated now a one plus one. And now we can drag this down here, similar to Excel. Uh, and then you can see now we have all values from one to 10. Yeah? So this number a one or the cell a one, which we have defined before is now automatically incremented by origin. Yeah? We could also uh, fix that. Yeah, by, for example, if we want to uh, fix the, the column, then we have to insert a dollar sign in front of that. Um, so when you drag this down, this will not change anything yeah, because the column is still the same. But in addition to that, we can also fix the row. And then we have to create this dollar sign here in front of the row number. And when we draw, uh, we, we drag this down, now you see everywhere this two appears. Uh, because now the the row number is constant. Yeah, if if you want, I can also make another video about this to show you more ways how to how to create these kind of um, yeah data files. But for for the time being, uh, I would now return to what we have said before, just because the main purpose of this video is now to explain how to fit the function. So now we are going from one to ten, and now for the y values we could of course do the same yeah we could now write here a1 square and and so on but i would also like to explain a little bit more about this uh, fit about this function co uh, cell which we have here this f of x so now we can for example just simply write an a here and then you see that what happens is just the copy of or it's just the creation of the copy of the numbers in a also within the column b yeah so it's actually, you define a function here uh, of x, where x is the value here in each cell of this a column. Yeah? So we could, for example, in order to show what happens when you write a square, we can also write that. So now you see uh, you have a quadratic uh, dependency here. So um, two equal, uh, x, of x, x equal to two equals to y equal four, uh, x equal three, to y equal nine and so on. So we just create a quadratic correlation between these values. And we can also define, of course, more complicated functions. Um, but in this case, I would like to maybe just create a simple polynomial to um, show how actually uh, this fit works. So maybe we can just define a simple function, 0 0.5 times x squared um, minus x maybe plus 10. Yeah, very simple one, but I think it will show the main purpose of that. Yeah, you can also enlarge the, the cell size, of course, by um, yeah, dragging them to the right or to the left, in this case, to see the full function. Sorry, this should not be an X, of course, this should be an A, yeah, because X is not defined. Uh, yeah, so as I said, it just uh, creates a polynomial function from, uh, from these X values in the A column. And now, as usual, we can also print them. So we can go to draw and uh, yeah, dot diagram. And then we see here, when we enlarge this a little bit, our typical graph that we have also created several times before. Yeah. 
Then of course, we could also in addition create another column where we insert the errors, which we can use as um, weighting factors for the fit. But at the moment, this is also not uh, what we want to do. We want to just create a simple fit function. Yeah? So now this is actually done. We have now created our data and the graph. And now we want to really go into the fit. And in order to do that, uh, we have to click on a certain uh, on a certain uh, button here in our menu bar in a certain tab, and the one which we need actually here in this case is called analysis. And then we have certain other uh, sub sub points that we can click on, of course. But what we need is in German it's called anpassen. In English it would be called fitting. Yeah. So there you have to go and then you have to click on, uh, you can choose between different fits. Polynomial fit is already included, but I would now like to define our own function to show how it works. If you want to define a user-defined function. You, linear fits is also very simple and many other things you can do here. But what I usually do if I want to, um, if I want to create a um, non-linear fit, then I click here on, on non-linear fit. Because I have used this before already, yeah, it's uh, it's giving you some some hint that you can also use the previous values again. But this we don't want to do. We want to create our own function, so we have to click here on Open Dialog. Now there's also the shortcut of Control Y if you want to directly go to this um, to this dialog. Yeah, and then uh, this seems to be a little bit complicated what what is written here, but actually it's much simpler than you might think. Um, so you can, of course, here again, click on categories and then search for certain functions which have been predefined. Yeah? For example, if you go to uh, uh, spectroscopy, then you can find here some, some functions which I also don't know, actually. Um, so we want to, of course, now we have a certain polynomial uh, function defined. So we want to now also define a certain fit function for that. And for that, we have to click here on category user defined, uh, which is interestingly still in English. And then we can either choose between functions that we have previously defined. I have tried this a few times, but in this case, we will click on new in order to create a new function. Yeah? And automatically the number is incremented by one. So now it's called fit new function seven because I have created six before. You can now give a name for that. Yeah, for example, just fit, but you can also keep it uh, constant if you want. And then normally you don't have to change anything. You can choose between explicit and implicit. Yeah, implicit here means that you have a function where a function of x and y yeah, or an equation of x and y, so to say. But since we have already uh, a polynomial function, which means we have y separated from the rest. So this will be on the y on the left side of our equation and all the x terms will be on the right side so we can use explicit in this case. Now we can define the variables so we have um, actually one variable x which is um, independent of course then we have this uh, dependent variable y which depends on x uh, function y of x actually and then we can define how many parameters we want to fit. Yeah? So in this case of course we have um, yeah, um, a polyno polynomial with a second degree, uh, which means we have to, in principle, define three parameters that can be adjusted according to the data points, yeah? the fit parameters. Then you can also define some, uh, some parameter which is uh, derived from that, but in this case we don't have to do that. It's also getting then really complicated and you can also define constant values here, which should not change. Huh? They get a fixed value and you cannot fit them. But also this we don't have here in our function. Uh, then uh, we can here see in the next, when we click on next, we can see here a table with our parameters that we have defined. And uh, then you can also add a, I think you can add a label for them here. You can also choose if they should be fixed values or not. And you can choose a pre defined value yeah so uh, an, or an initial value actually which then later will be changed so i noticed that for in case of polynomial functions most of the time you can you can set everything to one we know already that the second one has a has a minus sign so we can set the initial value directly to minus one but the rest uh, we can actually keep as it is and normally this works already very well yeah and then of course we have to define our function here in the function body 
And uh, in this case, um, it's simple. Yeah, as I said, we have a poly polynomial function, so we can write parameter a times x to the power two plus b times x plus b times x to the power um, one, which means b times x plus, and then uh, our our uh, value, um, which is not multiplied with any x, because it would be x to the power zero, which is then simply c. Yeah, and now we can uh, we can click on next. Normally here you don't have to change anything. You can set some limits. Yeah, where you want to have your parameter inside a, a fitting window, so to say. But in, in this case, um, it's uh, it's also not necessary. Um, maybe I can also cover this in another video. Yeah. The the most important thing is now after you have selected your function, you have to click here on calculating and switch from manual to automatic. Yeah, otherwise it will not work at all. I have tried this before already. Yeah, and then of course we have not selected any data until now. So you can do this by either selecting these two columns before you do this fitting, then it's done automatically, or you can click here on data selection and choose, uh, select the data yeah, that you want to choose. So in this case, we can click on these three dots and choose sheet one, which we have here and click on add. So now we have our, yeah, we have our, um, our um, uh, data in our in our table here down, which means that now the fit will be done according to this data. And you can see already a preview here down in this graph. And this is um, not working at the moment, yeah, because um, it's still using the initial parameter that we have defined, yeah, one minus one one, and this does not represent the data at all. So now when we have here selected auto and click on fit, now you will see. Uh, the fit is is done when this window appears it means it's ready and it converged so uh, now it asks you whether you want to change to the to the fit results yeah and in this case I would uh, I would like to do so yeah you can also say no then it's a little bit more tricky but in this case uh, we say yes and then automatically it uh, changes here the sheet according to that so now you see here uh, our, our fit function in combination with the data points. When we double click on that, uh, yeah, you can also enlarge that and you can see now the fit function has, has converged very well. Yeah, you can see here also a table that you can change in the position and the size. And this gives you then uh, for, the fit uh, for the fit function parameters 0 0.1, minus 1 and 10, which is exactly what we have defined before. Yeah, so uh, the error is zero yeah, because we have not uh, vary the data points. It's still the original function, therefore it should be zero and the fit works very well. But of course you can also try this with any other function. You can try this with your own data uh, and try also some other function like an exponential function and you will see it works very well. The only thing which is very important that if the fit does not converge for your function, then you have to play a little bit around with the initial values. Yeah? Maybe they are not set correctly. And sometimes you just have to use some educated guess in order to find the right ones. Or you have to change the interval in which uh, your parameters A, B, C and so on are fitted. Yeah? So um, you can, for example, specify that A cannot be a negative number. Yeah? So you have to define um, yeah, something in between zero and hundred, for example. And this usually helps origin to find the right fit uh, parameters. Yeah. And then you can, of course, also have here some statistic window where you can read more about uh, your parameters. You can uh, see something uh, about the T values, about uh, dependencies, some correlation between these parameters, for example, if they are available. But of course here uh, it's not. So all of them are actually close to one. Um, then you can also get some chi-square value, um, which is in this case uh, zero. Yeah, it should be like that because, as I said, we don't have any error um, for, for our parameters. Then we have this R value, which is also one because we have a perfect fit. Um, yeah, and uh, then uh, you can also see some residual diagram here, which is, of course, in this case also um, zero for all the data points because the the distance this is the distance between the fit and the data point and you because the fit works perfectly in this case as we have a perfectly defined function we don't have any residuals and all of them are equal to zero okay yeah so this is uh, in principle everything which i which i want to show you now in this video now you have all the tools and uh, yeah 
uh, or, the, or the toolbox available which you can use. Maybe what I can also show in addition is um, that when you want to change your function, yeah, you, you have a predefined function or user-defined function and you want to change the parameters, you want to change the, um, yeah, the, the, the function body. So in this case, you have to click here on tools. In English, I think it would be tools. There is a button which says that here you can, uh, you can access the existing uh, fit functions that you have defined or simply press F9. Yeah, this we can also try whether it works. And yeah, after a short amount of time, now you see here this new dialog uh, window appearing. And uh, yeah, then you see here all the fit functions that we have defined previously. And uh, yeah, you see that I, these, most of them are polynomials. Here I defined one function with a square root of x, which one can also try. And uh, then uh, here you can on the right side uh, delete these functions that we have created before. For example, that one. Yeah? It warns you that you cannot undo that, which makes also sense. And uh, you can also add new ones. You can make changes here. Uh, so it's it's no problem if you define the function not correctly in the beginning because you can always find a way back or you can always find a way to go back and change that function accordingly, which maybe works better. And then after changing that, you have to do the same thing again. You have to go actually to, um, to analysis. Then you have to go to fitting. Uh, which is the next one. Then you have to go to nonlinear fit, open dialog, uh, select this function that you have defined before, yeah, user defined function and the function. And uh, then you can do the same thing. You can go to auto, you can go on fit and see whether it works or whether you have to maybe manually adjust something in your fit function. Okay. Yeah, I hope that this was beneficial. I hope that you learned something new and that you are now able to define your own fit functions and try this with your own data to see if it works. If you have any further question, as usual, put it in the comment section. If you want to see more about that, also please uh, write a comment. I plan that in the next video, I will show how to create histograms and how to do a Gaussian fit to that. So we will also go a little bit deeper into this topic to, to understand this further, okay? Yeah, then in general, I would hope that you learned something new. If you like the video, as usual, please hit the like button. Please subscribe my channel if you don't want to miss any further video uh, and yeah, hopefully see you soon for a new video.